Hey folks, and welcome to another video from a plain truth dot info. Uh, I wanted to get today more into the directed energy weapons used, being used all around the world today. It's being used, has been used in China, up in the Beast Fires, Fort Murray in Alberta, Canada, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, Madeira, Portugal, uh, Santa Rosa, Sonoma County, uh, Butte County, uh, Mendocino County, Lake County here in Northern California. And now we have Southern California under attack. These are attacks, folks. They're, they're undercounting uh, the directed energy weapons being used. No one's talking about them except here on the Internet. But you can clearly see they melt engine blocks, folks. There's no firemen on record talking about how these fires have started in Southern California other than blaming the Santa Ana winds. And I'll show you from the commentary, these ain't being caused, caused by the Santa Ana winds. And they have the same exact profiles. They come in the middle of the night. There's massive uh, uh, kinetic energy developed, uh, EMP powers uh, taken out uh, before the event horizon of the fires begin or the torched laser EMP events. Of directed energy weapons have occurred and it's all part of energy tw agenda 21 which we'll get into a little bit here but here they're rebuilding in the exact same footprint as the laser directed any energy weapons targeted so we're under attack uh, we're under attack by a government that is not our government we need to stop the madness this is uh, some uh, from Matt Landman uh, of the fires down in Ventura County, same exact devastation, trees still standing, torch fires in the middle of the night, melting cars completely through the glass, uh, completely burnt, and this is all done by lasers. We're all learning about lasers now, we're all learning about the technology they've had available, but as you can clearly see from these pictures here, this is the same type of event horizons where one area is torched, and the area right next door to it is completely fine, right along property lines. This could not be by accident. This could not be by uh, just happenstance. So we're all learning about lasers, and now let's get into how lasers actually work. We had uh, Michu Kaku, uh, you know, poster boy physicist, uh, on the Today Show uh, two months ago during Hurricane Irma, announcing that it had a trillion watt lasers that they were using to manipulate weather. They admitted it on TV very proudly. Here you can see a thousand watt layers that are being used handheld to strip strip the rust off of metal. So different temperatures and I want you to notice the different colored lights. I've gotten a lot of criticism that there were people reporting blue lights. Well lasers don't have light fields. Well that's not true. As you can see in this video we have white light, we have purple light, we have blue light, and we have green light. Uh, and we'll explain that a little more, but it's all based on the type of temperatures being created with these lasers. Anywhere from a quarter watt of power up to a trillion watts of power of these lasers. And you can see it cut right through. It's cutting through, but it's not hurting the metal. It's cleaning it off, but it's not hurting it. Here you see a pipe. You don't see the laser, but you see the effects. You can see it cutting right through, but it's not touching the wood. It's cleaning the metal, but it's not touching the wood because wood resonates at a different frequency, a different color and density frequency. So that's how you can tell the difference, but it hasn't harmed the wood. Now, if we look at this video coming up right here, we can see it again, torching and cleaning metal in very precise areas using a hand held device. So to use a laser of that power they say you must have you know all this weight and heaviness that would make it the ability to do that. But here we can clearly see a different temperature adjustment. See the purple light folks, the reddish purple light. It's cleaning off of paper the ink. It is taking ink off paper. Blank ink using the separate temperature to clean it using lasers. This is how precise, this is how accurate this is how they can do it. I'm showing you right here how they do it. It's been doing it for a very long time. It's just most of the population has been pretty ignorant. Here you see again different colored lasers. That's a kind of an oranges purple laser there. So you can see the different colors represent the different intensities of the frequencies. Now watch this coming up here. We see once again
it's cleaning the metal on a straight line and this looked like just like the Santa Rosa fires it looked like a laser had gone through a certain area and then other areas were just left alone and here they are just stripping metal very easily done and it's not even hot to the touch now check this out here's paper and a pencil and you can see the writing on the paper watch what happens they clean the writing right off the paper the paper doesn't even move and watch this it even takes the paint right off the wooden pencil but doesn't touch the pencil itself this is using thousand watts of energy folks again you can see the different colors of these lasers um, and you can see that sometimes you can see the colors and there's other times when the light is not visible coming from the laser gun itself here you can see the purple with the white light so again they're using different intensities and different frequencies of energy and power it's all about power here's a white light you can see the beam so when people said you saw a blue beam they were correct when people say there is no beams on lasers they are correct they're both correct so the colors direct the intensity and they can use it with light or without light depending on what the projects they're using it on so it can be used either way and it also can be used uh, in very very precise manners where they can dial in whatever frequency of the object they're looking at check this out but I don't have turkey I kind of do it's more like a tube of turkey otherwise known as a wiener we made it about halfway through, so let's go a little bit slower. Cut number two. Oh, we're close. Test number three, even slower. And I think we've got a full hot dog slice. Kill me! Test number four. I'm gonna go a quarter slower than the last one. And this has got the focal point a little bit further down. God, the smell is really rank. That definitely went all the way through. The moment of truth. Oh, yeah. So that's how precise it can be. And also, I slowed this down because I just caught it on a, a very short clip, but it's very analytical as to see how precise and what kind of precision these lasers can burn through. So here is a laser being used to uh, cut and surgically cut uh, into metal here. And we'll come up in just a second. So you can see how this is being used and can be used uh, for targeted areas like uh, California, China, uh, Canada, Tennessee, Portugal. You can see how it just cuts right through. And it's even being used to remove tattoos and then laser surgery. Uh, so here, let's hear the doctor himself describe how the different frequencies of colors are used uh, different vibrations to uh, take away tattoos and remove uh, unsightly uh, veins and whatnot. All that ink can be removed. Now, ink and therefore colors or pigmentation are very specific in that they respond to different frequencies of energy. And so for each different color you might have in a tattoo, you might need a different kind of laser to interact with that ink and get it out. And that's why there are six different frequencies and types of lasers for interacting with all sorts of different kinds of pigment that the tattoo artist might have put into your skin. Fortunately, under the skilled hands of someone who really knows what they're doing, like Dr. Pien, who is arguably the most skilled and experienced laser surgeon in the country, the ink can be removed in a series of treatments, layer by layer, so that not too much is done at a time. If you try to get all the ink all at once, it simply could overwhelm the skin and then you're likely to have a mark left over, maybe even a little scarring. But if it's done more delicately and a more judicious, progressive sort of way, then you can get the ink out without causing any scarring at all. Now, what's gonna happen is that the ink is actually gonna be vaporized by the laser. And as the ink is vaporized, it basically explodes in your skin, so it's a kind of a messy process. Dr. Pien is gonna be dabbing your skin a lot with cotton to keep it clean and dry as she's removing the ink. But like I said, it does hurt a bit on the way out. There's gonna be a sore, and you are gonna bleed, 
and that'll be bandaged. And after the scabs have come off and everything is healed, you'll come in for your second, third, or fourth, or however many treatments you need, depending on the amount of ink and how deep it was put into your skin. Precise and controlled, the unwanted vessels are gently eliminated, leaving your skin with no evidence that you ever had any visible veins or capillaries or even came to visit our office. The procedure itself is very quick and you'll barely feel it. At most, you will feel a pin prickly kind of tickling feeling as the laser passes down the vein and the vein disappears. To have such a fantastic speaker, Michael Shaw is going to talk to you. He is legendary. Michael Shaw's freedomadvocates.org is a lifeline to those of us who are fighting United Nations Agenda 21 across the world. This is an international movement that you're part of. And I'm going to talk first about the association of Bay Area governments. A bag. You can see the state having been divided into these various regions that have nothing to do with county lines or um, city boundaries. This is how government really operates in California. A bag is outlined on the screen. Now, the Association of Bay Area Governments, these nine counties, is the ABAG is the regional planning agency for, for those nine counties and 101 cities. ABAG's planning and service programs, this is their words, not mine, work to address the regional, economic, social, and environmental challenges. So you see the three E's there, they, they substitute the word social for equity. ABAG is running your city. It controls major zoning decisions, infrastructure decisions, and more. Now FOCUS, the FOCUS organization, is led by ABAG. It includes the Metropolitan Tran Transportation Commission, another regional governance operation, the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, and the Bay Conservation and Development Commission. Now this happens in partnership uh, that's what they, how they describe it, with local governments throughout the Bay Area. Now, FOCUS has held stakeholder forums related to the three E's, environment, economy, and equity. Again, this was lifted from their website. Regional planning is a very major tax spending investment. It is an investment in central planning. Now, how many are aware that ABAG is now in the power business? The ABAG Energy Programs uh, partner with ABAG Green Communities. This is a partnership with PG&E. The same devils appear all the time. Energy Upgrade California. The Department of Energy Better Buildings Program. And the Electric Vehicle Project. Regionalism in action. Now ABAG is in the power business. What kind of service do you think you're going to get? The answer is shortage by design. In fact, this is another ABAG website. The energy conservation section of the ABAG um, uh, endeavor. And I'll just point to one line on this uh, website. It says, 
when the power goes out. You see, if you don't conserve, the power is going to go out. If you do conserve, the power is going to go out. <laughs> we need to expose solutions other than the two presented by ABAG if we don't want the power to go out. Now, water policy is following the same smart approach. We've got to remember, ICLE is a foreign UN-related political organization. It's necessary that we expose ICLE, get out of AMBAG, you know. The federal legislation makes joining AMBAG a voluntary local decision. So far, every ounce of American land is subject to these regional outfits. So, get out of AMBAG, ABAG, up here, I'm sorry, and work to disband PG&E's government governing authority. Those running PG&E are working for the globalists. Now let's talk about ICLE locally. Jeg Brugman is the founder of ICLE. He says, the UN will become the United Cities of the world. These are the ICLE members in the San Francisco Bay Area. San Francisco Bay Area is the most concentrated collection of ICLE members in the world. You hardly find a city here in the Bay Area that's not a member of ICLE. So here we can see uh, two months to the day after the uh, laser attacks, the directed energy weapons uh, were attacking Sonoma, Napa, Butte, uh, Mendocino, Lake, many counties, over 60 fires. We can see the Agenda 21 being put into place here. Fires uh, now are causing people to puke their homes. They're selling them at 25 cents on the dollar, uh, offering a quarter what they have to cost to sell the home standing. People are giving up. They're moving out. Here, the scumbag Gallagher, Bill Gallagher, we'll get into a minute. He's making offerings of 105,000 to 125,000, even though he owns a couple banks and they're making loans to people, but they're not giving them any money. Uh, 125,000, the properties are exempt from city impact fees, which can amount to 50. So if you have city impact fees, take 50 off the 125, and your home that was worth five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars is now worth maybe seventy-five thousand dollars total loss. Oh, by the way, you still own the mortgages on it. Uh, light price tags are over the map from 300 to 700,000 in the area of Coffee Park, uh, and they're selling for 160,000 quarter of its value. Uh, price of 135,000 is a fraction of the 500 half million dollars of the other neighborhoods. And we can see Agenda 21, uh, you know, to being helpful. Hey, did you lose your bicycle in the Sonoma? We're going to give you bikes. See how they're doing it, folks? The Santa Barbara County Bike Coalition is giving bikes to people. Yeah, that's how they're doing the Agenda 21. So this Bill Gallagher is a real scumbag. And let's get into him a little bit. Here's a picture of Mr. Scumbag himself. Uh, owner of a bunch of uh, senior citizen homes and whatnot, accuses Gallagher of reimbursing employees for campaign donations, uh, goes on to say how he was gouging them. The Oakmont area, Oakmont was part of the area evacuating. Uh, it's a true source of spending, hiring uh, politicians, buying up politicians, and well, not a real player in the Santa Rosa area. And then there's also some commentary about Mr. Gallagher, Santa Rosa developer and founder of the First Community Bank, as well as Blue Gate Bank, served as director of Sonoma National Bank. He purchased the old Sutter Hospital complex uh, in the Fountain Grove area uh, with an outrageously advantageous system to him. Path of fire, it was right in the path of the fires in the ex ev ev evacuation zone that was miraculously untouched. Other properties that Mr. Gallagher has or had interest is the Oakmont uh, Senior Development, Verena uh, Senior Facility in Fountain Grove. Their, their uh, bank is offering assistance, uh, loans to these people who have lost things. He's also involved with Sonoma Clean Power. Sonoma National Bank was their initial funders. They're in partnership with PG&E. And here's the rest of these scumbags, Douglas Bosco, who I went in the uh, interviews with, uh, went over with them. Um, 
um, Doug Bosco and uh, Darius Anderson, who own the local Press Democrat, Kenwood Investments, directing the cleanup uh, as they profit handsomely with their disaster capitalist, uh, James Lee Witt, former FEMA buddy of Clinton, who's moved in here along with the Army Corps of Engineers and Red Cross and all the other people. Is uh, found Patrick Gallagher, relative, vice chairman of the Blue Gate Bank. Uh, Gallagher worked in real estate development. Hmm. Mr. Bill Gallagher is known as president of Oakmont Developers. Uh, there's been some suits by people that have been mistreated in the uh, uh, the facilities that he's managed and whatnot. So here's the guys that are really, you know, Sonoma County uses fraud to sell high-priced government energy, how they worked us all to get the Sonoma clean power when the clean power only provides a little bit more clean power, 33% versus PG's 19%. So that's how they're saying it. it's better. So these are the scumbags we're having to deal with. This is the Agenda 21 in actions coming to Santa, Southern California now. We can just follow the pipeline just going right through. This is considered one fire. You've got a patch here, you've got a patch here, you've got a patch here, a patch here, and a, another patch that's not showing up over there. How is that one fire? This, this just doesn't make any sense. This is just way too far spread out. I mean, this is ridiculous. These are, these are, this is probably, I mean, I can't even imagine how, how far it is, but it's, these aren't close together. These fires, they're calling it one fire, but that's misleading. Clearly, this the whole area here didn't catch on fire. I mean, this whole thing, this wasn't all one big fire. So how did this part catch from here or from here? You see, now let me put, let me play something else that makes it even more suspicious. Let's listen to this particular description. This is in that area. This is still in the Creek Fire. So again, the same comments that we were getting up in the Santa Rosa, Sonoma County, Napa, all the fires up in uh, Northern California, we're seeing the same type of commentary. Thomas Ventura fire, Ventura fire broke out about 9.30 p.m., same time general that it broke out October 8th, Sunday, uh, in uh, Northern California. Drove to see how close it really was. He disagrees with directed energy weapons. However, it did include microwave frequency technology. They're both the same. So, directed energy, the winds towards Ventura, and the air was literally electric. Same things were set up here. Hair stood on end. Power went out before the fires. 10.05 p.m., they cut all power from Camarillo all the way to Santa Barbara as I was finishing pumping gas. This, to me, was the kicker, and by the next morning of the foothills, the Ventura were lit up. The selection of the houses that burnt to the ground had no pattern at all. <clears throat> One house here, two houses over there. <clears throat> you will not see this video rebroadcast again, showing because there's no continuity to the fire destruction. <clears throat> they tried to say that embers got into the attics of the houses. I disagree. I lived here for 49 of 51 years, and there has never been a humming wind like this, especially in December. Ventura just installed some huge new uh, ground uh, uh, energy uh, networks, uh, ground wave energy networks, and ELF, or uh, extremely low frequency scalar technology towers in the last six months. Fired up, no pun intended. I lost my home, shop, beloved dogs, just about everything I owned in the wall fire in Northern California, but it's so hard for me to fathom now how the fire was 14 miles away and somehow jumped 14 miles, avoiding, to se avoiding several thousand acres across the road from my neighbors and myself, only to start again at my home and then continue up the road, burning down 41 more homes without burning trees and other vegetation, but take almost every other structure for four miles. Makes no sense. All right, another last message here. Uh, young people, listen to elders, believe us. Directed energy we weapons or something similar is the only thing that makes sense. I wish I were wrong. I'm 50 plus. My father's 80 plus. We lived in SoCal all our lives, lived in the foothills, and dealt with Santa Ana winds every year. Sure, there were big fires. We used to drive around the burn areas after they happened and look at unfortunate damage. It was predict unpredictable. But even fire damage has certain broad patterns. I could go on, but this is not normal. This is not a natural phenomenon, and these multiple fires and winds are being orchestrated by someone or group. I'm not a zealot, I'm not crazy, and I don't wear a tin hat. Just very observant, with wide, eyes wide open, and awake. And finally, Cindy S., 15 hours ago, live in Cloverdale, north of Santa Rosa. During the fires, my son was out at 3 a.m. watching blue lasers come down from the sky. Directed energy weapons.